Hey, WordPress people, welcome back to the WPMRR WordPress podcast. I'm Joe. And I'm Beyonce. And you're listening to the WordPress business podcast. I think we all have to bow down because we have Beyonce on the podcast (laughs) this week. Uh, Pretty incredible. Beyonce, how's it going? It's going great. Just the subjects bowing to me today. It's wonderful, as always. Yes, very nice. Beyonce, excellent character selection, kind of like the Trump card. I feel like it's like you can't really beat Beyonce. That's kind of the, the pinnacle. Uh, right. I, when I was, uh, I got married a couple years ago and everyone at my wedding remembers the vows that I gave because I called my wife the uh, white Beyonce, which was, I think, pretty high praise. That is, <laughs> so that's like is the, a, the, the peak of all praises. Yeah, so. I thought, so I thought well it was a good day to a good day to do it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, cool. you're a smart man. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Try every once in a while on occasion. Um, cool. Well, Beyonce on the podcast this week, uh, also known as Shayna Weisinger. How's it going? Why don't you tell people a little bit about yourself and kind of what you do? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, firstly, thanks for having me. This is awesome. I have a background in video production and video and marketing. So I've been playing with video cameras my entire life. I was the only one who even knew how to use the camera in my family when I was like 10 years old. Oh, nice. You know, I was like playing with three VCRs in the sunroom trying to edit footage at like 12. So and you don't realize when you're young that that's like an actual career path at some point. But you just feel like you're goofing around with your cousin on like a sleepover weekend. So I've been doing that forever and ever. Amen. I really dove into to like video for digital marketing about five years ago, really just just kind of honed it into repurposing content. It's been something that I've been preaching to all of my uh, video clients for years now. And I've realized that there just isn't a solution to do it well and quickly and efficiently for businesses, for social media. And so I started Repurpose House last year. And now that's what I do is I help people see the most potential that they can out of their existing content and realize that it has so much more mileage than they ever really think that it does. So it's exciting to be able to help people see that potential. Yeah, very cool. And and the, the way that we met is actually pretty funny. We got introduced through my friend Will, um, who you've also worked with and with a lot of his digital stuff. So Will was uh, actually one of the people when I started getting into kind of the digital world, Will was one of the people who I was like, ah, oh, Will knows so much, man. That guy is so knowledgeable. <laughs> he runs this uh, events company. So he does uh, he does some audio, but he does a lot of, uh, or he does, um, his company does work with uh, like uh, event production. Um, so he'll bring in the whole crew to like run uh, Comic-Con. But a lot of his marketing is kind of based in like doing tr- kind of more traditional digital marketing uh, or in traditional di- digital marketing avenues. When he introduced us, I was like, she must be awesome because if, she, <laughs> if he or is working with her, I know he's so serious about this stuff. Uh, I remember when I was starting off, Will told me, he's like, I got this email list of like 5,000 people. And I was like, oh my God, 5,000 people. Like 5, it's incredible. 000. Yeah. And so uh, the, uh, the, I know that you uh, do some great work. Uh, I'm looking at your, uh, your website right now, repurposehouse.com. Uh, And so, uh, yeah, repurposing content is very interesting. How did you kind of move from uh, from doing kind of general digital marketing into kind of this kind of sub niche of you have this piece of content? Try it. Let's try and repurpose it. Great question. So it's been an interesting journey. Um, you got time. So here, here we, <laughs> we go. As much everybody, time as you everybody get your coffee and get comfortable. Yeah. So I'll try to make it short and sweet. Um, no, actually, so I was doing video production specifically for like strategic digital marketing. I actually started Wake Brand Media, which is my video production company, because I saw a real problem with either video production companies didn't really have the marketing background and they just produce nice videos and expect the client to tell them how that's going to work strategically in their game plan. And truthfully, like that's not the case really ever, unless they're working with agency or unless they have like a really incredible badass marketing team, you know? And a lot of the people that I was working with, they kind of knew enough, but they didn't, they didn't really think about how it was going to play a part in more than just one avenue outside of just throwing it on YouTube and hoping that, you know, a million people watch it and they get a ton of new clients. And that's unrealistic, right? That's how that works. Yeah, you publish it and then you get a million visitors and a million views. (laughs) Right, that's how Beyonce did. She put a video up and that was the end of that. So... There you go. Um, yeah, her, so, well, now that's her marketing strategy, right? Publish and then it goes viral. But yeah, yeah well, don't think right, that's yeah. Like that. It takes a minute to get there, but whatever. <laughs> so um, so anyhow, what I what I learned was like, well, actually, I started it at uh, the Infusionsoft conference in 2014. And I was doing some freelance video production for a business coach. Will was actually there with me running around and asking people nice. questions, which is so funny. Surprise. Um 
Right, exactly. With his high energy, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal you, and we're gonna run around like, <laughs> like morons through this conference and just grab people. <laughs> that actually so sounds exactly we, like perfect. <laughs> right. No, you're absolutely. He's so much fun. So that's what we did. And but while we were doing that, I had, um, I mean, if, if you don't know what Infusionsoft is, who's listening? It's a platform. It's a CRM platform. They're massive now. They just keep growing. But all these people, business owners, kept coming up to me. They're like, Oh my gosh! So we know we need video for our business. And I kept hearing like two different trains of thought that they had. They either had tried it and got a really good deal and they got burned because like everybody and their brothers has a DSLR and, you know, iMovie or they Mm -hmm. were, they thought it was way too expensive. They were spending five figures on one video. It didn't make sense for their ROI. Like it just, it was ridiculous. And so I was getting frustrated because there has to be a middle ground. And I come from the school of like, I went to film school. I have gotten to, I I was real scrappy. Like I taped a camera to a vacuum to get a nice low rolling shot. You know what I mean? Like there's a ways (laughs) to do it that is not like, let's buy $50,000 worth of gear. And not that I wanted to show up with my vacuum roller to any of these shoots, but you know, I know that there's a more efficient way to make this happen, especially having like a business background. With that, I decided to make it more strategic. So with clients, I would set up like initial calls where I'm like, we're not just going to come in and shoot. Like, let's talk about your whole strategy and let's see how we can make this one shoot the most efficient and get the most mileage. So what I would say is like, yeah, you need a company overview video that needs to be like 90 seconds, to two minutes max. But also while we're there, what else can we film? Like, can we do teaser videos that go out on social media? Because to be honest, if you have a bunch of videos that are about how awesome you are, nobody cares. Like nobody cares about you yet. You have to get them to a place where they care enough to go, and then actually watch those videos. So we need to do some sort of value or give content as well. So we would like strategize about how that would look for their business. And like, it was basically about saying, let's film as much as we can, optimize for placement in all these different places. Because something you put on Facebook is going to be very different than something you're throwing on Instagram and then something you're going to put on your website and YouTube. So out of that, like we would do these really long form videos, one of my clients was doing all video podcasts. And so when we started to do that, I started to do some research in like the podcasting space and realized that there really wasn't a service that was repurposing podcast episodes, taking audio, turning them into video because video is king. Like video on social media gets the, the most views, the most engagement. I mean, it's it crushes every other medium. And so to not be able to turn audio into video was silly to me. So I started offering that service to my video podcast clients. We would take smaller clips. We would turn them into audiograms, which are actually just video, you know, the moving waveform, you know, with the titling and you got the header on it and some captions. And um, as I was trying to pitch video podcasts to like existing podcasters, they were like, yeah, that's great and all, but I would, if you would just sell those small audiograms, I would buy that all day long. And I was like, there's, then I started to research and nobody was doing anything like this. Mm -hmm. So we started off as, well, we, I started off as podcast memes. And we only did repurposing for podcasts. We had like specific packages. And I realized quickly that podcasters weren't the demo. The people who thought it was a no-brainer and signed up and really crushed it were actually digital marketers who used podcasting as one arm of their marketing. So I was like, let's go back to the roots. Let's talk to all digital marketers. Let's do video. Like every type of content can be repurposed and should be repurposed, whether it's text, video, audio. And so we just came up with a package in a way to be able to repurpose these things consistently so that like a blog post can now be teased on social media consistently. And you can drive traffic back to that blog post on your website where you have an opt-in, where you can gather some information, right? And be able to do that just for every type of content and not let content die. Because that was the biggest problem with my clients. They have these really great like webinars or these really great training videos. And I'm like, why aren't you chopping these up into tiny pieces and throwing them all over the place. And so it kind of just came out of like creating the long form stuff and then realizing that they could do more with it and not let it die, which is funny because, you know, as a video producer, you want them to just produce more video (laughs) with you. And I'm the one going in there being like, no, 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 don't produce more video. Don't pay me more money. Just use the stuff you have and start like throwing it on social media like crazy. So that's kind of the long short of it. That's uh, really cool. I, I really like this idea of, uh, of using content in multiple ways across multiple mediums. I think a lot of people is, so I like my, I'm kind of like in the SEO kind of inbound world. We write a lot of content on our blog trying to drive traffic and it takes a lot of time and resources to write a new piece of content. You know, it takes tens, 20, you know, 10, 20 hours to put together a really high quality piece of content. Uh, And 
if you do that 10 times, it's 10 times the expense of that piece of content. But if you write one piece of content, you know, maybe it takes 10, 20 hours, but the repurposing of that content really does not take as long uh, and can be a lot more efficient to kind of put that into different mediums, you know, take blurbs of it. If you have a podcast episode, it takes a lot of upfront costs to create that podcast, but to chop it up is, you know, if you've already edited a whole podcast episode, you know, chopping it up takes a fraction of the time, but maybe you can drive, you know, two or three times as much traffic to that episode with just, you know, even a little bit more work. Yeah. So that's really cool. It's really cool. Um, for uh, the repurposing of uh, podcasts uh, and doing podcasts and video, it's, it was so funny because like before we started recording, I was like, we're doing video, but it's really just to uh, just to kind of have this uh, interaction so we can read each other's body language and stuff because we're on video right now. But I was like, oh, we're just we just published the audio and now we're in the podcast. And it's like, Maybe I should start thinking about doing putting the system together to really publish the audio or to publish the video too. Yes, <laughs> do it. And people, I mean, I think people like seeing the body language. It also gives them another platform to view it. Like you can take mm. this screen recording and put it up on YouTube, have a cool thumbnail, and then you can take the smaller snips, like the 30 second to one minute deals and just turn them into memes and throw those all over social too. It's just another way to show the content, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. The, uh, the podcast and audio form is just, yeah, there's so many different people that like to, everyone likes content in a different way, right? Right. Some people like audio, some people like video, some people want to do audio and video. Some people want to read it. Some people want to read long form. Some people want to read a short blurb. Like people want, uh, want different things and to be able to give it, uh, to them in the way that they, to, they can digest it how they want to is really like kind of meeting them where they are is kind of a a nice way, you know, to, to, to produce content. Yeah. Well, and also keep in mind that like, while people may want to listen to your podcast through their ears, because it's long form, you know, it's easier for them to like, take a jog and listen to the whole thing. Maybe to get their attention initially, it takes a 30 second clip of video that they're scrolling with their thumb on Facebook. And then it drives mm. them to do the long form in a different way. It's just the it, again, it's like the stage and the journey, what kind of content is going to hit them before they get to that long form piece of content and consume it in the way that makes sense for them. Yeah. Very cool. We have probably a good number of listeners out there. Uh, and I, I say this, I think, because I'm speaking for myself. And I think like we've done a pretty good job growing this business, but like there's so much more repurposing of content we can do. Like I can very easily say that honestly, like that we have a lot of work that we can do in that area. So I think that probably a lot of listeners are also thinking like, okay, I write a lot of blog content, but like, oh, I don't have a podcast. Like I'm not doing that or I'm not doing a uh, video yet or I'm not, I'm just not like using all my tools I have in front of me efficiently. For people who are kind of starting off and kind of in one or maybe two areas that they're trying to do the marketing in, what would be some some ways, I guess you can just use, I will use me as an example. Like how, sure. what are some ways that I could start off uh, trying to do some, some repurposing of content? Like maybe just some small, like easy wins that I could just kind of start to get some momentum so that I could like move into more, you know, more if I want to, once I get the ball rolling. Yeah, absolutely. So we, let's just start with the podcast, right? So like we were talking about, taking those small snippets, turning them into image quotes, because images still do well, video does better, but at least it's a different medium, right? So you can take something super awesome that you said on the episode or that the get, or Beyonce said on the episode and, you know, take 25 words of that, slap it on an image quote card with the person's face who said it. And the cool thing about that is the power of resharing is, is big. And the more pieces of content you have that that other person, the guest can share as well, like that's just consistently putting your brand in front of their audience, like more than just here, share the episode, right? So we'll do like audiograms. We'll do three to four for each episode. We'll do them in square for feeds so that, you know, you're scrolling, anything that you're scrolling with your thumb, you put a big headline on there that poses some sort of question that people want the answer to. You make sure you have captions because 85% of people on Facebook, is they're all scrolling with the audio off, which is hilarious, but it is what it is. Right. And yeah. if you think that LinkedIn is a bunch of professionals and they'll actually watch video with the sound on, you're wrong because 80% of them are scrolling with the sound off. So mm. um, making sure you have captions is super important. Square size is super important because it gets the most engagement and just for feeds doing that. But also like we found out that stories get a ton of engagement too if you hashtag it right and if you're consistent. So you can take that same clip make it story size, throw that on your stories for Facebook and Instagram. You get a lot of traction on that. And then again, the quote cards, same thing, square for the feeds. Actually, now it's landscape for Twitter, which is super annoying because now we're adding another like shape to our template sets for our clients (laughs) because we have to be with the times. Um, And then just making sure that it's optimized for each platform and then just consistently putting it out there. So for instance, like if you pulled three one minute clips from this episode, you can get six different pieces of content out of it between like image quotes and audiograms. 
And you didn't really have to do a whole lot of work. You had to pull three minutes total, right? So that's a great way to do it. Definitely putting it on YouTube is an awesome way to do it. Making sure you have a dynamic thumbnail with big, bold text and an image or two images like you and the guest. And then also one thing that we are doing is on our show notes page, we do the show notes, but we do the full transcription on there also for SEO. But then turning like these audio episodes into like cool blog posts that actually break down what you guys talk about. There's so many ways to repurpose just podcasts, which is why I was so excited about them when I was doing the video podcast for clients because I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so much that you can do. So that's just podcasting. And then it dives into like text, video, blog posts. You can turn into like for us, we turn them into text motion videos. And then we like just like short snippets up to like 100 words is about 90 seconds ish of video, depending on how long that the, the text stays on screen. But we'll do like really cool, like stock videos in the background. Uh, we'll do like authors and books. So we'll take snippets from the books that uh, were really impactful and just turn them into little 90 second videos. Oh, yeah. I like that. Because, uh, yeah, we have we've not dived so, super into video yet. We kind of we're starting this webinar series. So we're doing some webinars. But uh yeah, I mean, you say video is king, and I'm like, yes, we like should do more. <laughs> we should do yes, more video. Do it. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's it's oh, it feels like it feels intimidating to me to dive in to like be doing video at the level that I feel need, like we need to kind of stand out from the crowd. I'm always feeling like the internet is so crowded, and it's if I'm going to do video, like we got to do a really good job. I think. I honestly can't remember if it was before this podcast started recording or after, but you were talking about some little things that you you have done in the past to uh, the, to do some do video work without having the big expenses. What are some, maybe yeah? Again, for me, like what are some things I could do to to start start with doing some video for for my own business without you know necessarily paying someone you know ten thousand fifteen thousand dollars to shoot a two minute video that who knows if it's going to do well or not. Right, right. That's a great question. So um, on. On the first episode that I did of my video podcast, we had Dennis Yu as a guest. And he's like the, the Facebook king. He literally wrote the book on Facebook marketing. Uh, they teach it in like tons of colleges. Like he's the man, right? He did a paid study with one of his like one of his massive clients. They're like a, a national furniture store. And um, they tested fully produced video versus selfie style hold my phone video. And the selfie style hold my phone video crushed the full production video. Oh, people wow. get, yeah, right. And people get so hung up on having to have like this crazy, beautiful production. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are places to do that. Like your company overview video should be high class because you take yourself seriously enough and people will believe that you take yourself seriously if you put some production into it. But just the content that you're consistently putting out, like, as organic as possible is always really, really great. Now, I am I also know in addition to that, you need to be doing stuff that has like headers so you're grabbing attention or whatever. Once you engage already and they know who you are and they're interested in what you say, you can get away with just selfie style and, you know, putting out content that way. But most of it's going to be like give content. What you're saying is super important. So like giving tips, tricks, thoughts, like things that will help people in their life that are short and sweet and to the point in their life or their business. I mean, people, if you're going to help them make money, I'm sure that they're super pumped about that. Um, but the selfie style is something that people don't realize is so impactful. And making sure the selfie style is straight up and down is a good thing because again, takes up more of the screen. But I'm also, you know, I have a video background. So I am also like, let's at least make it look nice. So like, don't be in direct harsh sunlight because you're going to have massive shadows on your face. It's going to be tough for people to see you. So in a shaded area is always nice. You get more even lighting. Yeah. And you actually, you lived this right before we started recording. You were like, you're recording outside right now, which is, yeah. looks super <laughs> lovely. But right before we started recording, uh, Shana like moved. She was like, "The sun's gonna be on me in five minutes, so I'm gonna move here." So you were actually you you you've already li you're already living this <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Well, it was more like I don't need to start sweating here. I'm in Phoenix, <laughs> so I'm like I would prefer not to be dripping sweat in the middle of this deal. But also, yeah, the, the harsh sunlight is really what it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the uh, little hack with the uh, hold the video vertically. Sometimes is actually helpful because it takes up more real estate because when you scroll yeah. it'll be it'll take up a little more space on the screen and it's it's funny our uh, our head of marketing Kaylin would uh, she's probably listening right now she'll she'll uh, she'll tell me like yes Joe like the uh, the the social and the like a lot of the not necessarily high quality video but just the really personable and just you know shows your personality video is super important like she's a big believer in that so Kaylin you're right yeah. you nailed that one one thing that he also said like his at the end of our show I always ask for like one 
highly, imp- one thing that somebody who is listening can implement in the next 48 hours that doesn't require like a team of 15 people, right? Like you can do mm. this. And his tip was get out your phone and record a one minute video and just post it go live for a minute, like just do something and do it like every day, like give yourself a challenge. Be like, I'm going to do a one minute video every day for the next 30 days and just see like the A, you'll get way more comfortable talking. It's super uncomfortable if you're not used to selfie style videoing. It took me a long time to like be okay with not fully produced versions of myself. And it took even longer for me to be okay with live because I'm a video editor. Like if I mess up, I want to be able to edit that out. It was crazy to me to even fathom just going and not being able to fix it later. So but it just takes time and practice. Like everybody wasn't, anybody you see online who's just incredible in front of their camera in general did not look that way at the beginning. You just have to keep on trying and practicing and don't give up on it. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, man, you nailed that one. I think I want to even stay on that for a second because I think that's important for everybody to realize no matter how amazing you think someone is doing anything, what you're not seeing is, you know, the the hundreds or thousands or 10,000s of hours of practice it took them to get there. Doing selfie video stuff for me is like, I'm not very comfortable doing that. And I don't, I don't, I don't even really know why I'm like thinking about this right now, live while we're doing this. It's like, why do I feel uncomfortable? But I, it's not, a, it's not in my comfort zone, but like most things, things are not in your comfort zone until you just do them a lot. And then you, you kind of, you know, you can get there. Uh, so yeah, I dig that very much. For me, it was like, I, I was so used to doing video of other people. So I felt kind of, and I had no problem like setting up cameras and doing like highly produced stuff for myself. But Mm. I started to feel kind of narcissistic with the like camera phone, like face, like it just wasn't something that felt natural to me because it's not something I would do in my daily life anyway. So for me, it was like I had to get over the hump of feeling like it was like me, 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 selfie, selfie kind of deal and really embrace the fact that like as long as I'm saying something that benefits the people who are watching and that they feel like they've gotten something out of it, then really it's not about me. It's about them. And that really kind of got me over the hurdle of feeling kind of ridiculous doing selfie videos. And I think that, I mean, unless you're really into just filming yourself, you know, good for you. More power to you because you'll get over that hurdle real quick because it doesn't exist. But for me, that's, that's kind of where mine was. And I felt a lot more comfortable after I realized that. Yeah, for sure. I feel like I'm a big, I'm a big believer that if you're, if you have something that you don't feel like is a big strength, if you want to learn how to do it and it's not really a strength, you you can feel free if that's what you want to do. But if it's about like building and scaling a business, I would much prefer to have someone else do it. So I think that if someone is looking to repurpose content, like repurpose house would be a great resource for people to look into. But there are probably some people out there on budgets trying to do a little bit themselves and at least get started. I would love to hear maybe some of the tools that that you that you use or you could recommend to people. We use things like doing um, like images for social. Um, we use like Canva, um, which is a nice, like, I think it's like a freemium tool, it's free. And then if you wanna like do uh, images with uh, transparent, PD, uh, transparent PNG background files, like, oh, please upgrade. So if you want some more advanced stuff, you have to upgrade, but it has a lot of awesome free stuff in there. So like Canva is one tool I use, but maybe you have some others that people can check out that would be helpful for like creating some of this well-designed stuff and and not having to be a super high, you know, (laughs) a high experienced designer to do it. Yeah, absolutely. So actually I do, um, when I do speaking engagements, 90% of the time, it's just training people how to do this themselves. And Mm -hmm. with free tools and and some paid tools, it just depends on how efficient you really want to be and what you're willing to pay for. But there's a free way to do all of this. Actually, I stand corrected because the one of the free platforms just started charging and he promised he wasn't going to, but we're there. And I was like, I knew it was coming, but they're not charging a lot. So it's kind of like, you know, you pick your battles. So initially with the image quotes, you're totally right with Canva, Canva or Photoshop. If you've got Photoshop, great. If you've got Canva, great. One nice hack with that is that like we embrace the power of templates in Repurpose House. The only reason or the only way we are able to churn so fast and do overnight delivery and have that much content is because we start from a template, multiple, like multiple template sets, and then we just revise what's within it. So you can have like a template created for Canva done by like somebody on Fiverr. 
you can go through like Upwork and find somebody to just create these templates for you. Have them create three to five of them that you're really happy with that you know like, okay, this is a template that I want to be able to swap an image of a guest out of and I need to be able to do that easily and let them know that. And they'll create something where all you have to do is just remove and replace that image and some of the text. And then you have something that looks clean that you really didn't have to start from scratch or spend a lot of time on, right? And have them do it in the different sizes. Have them do it square for those feeds. And like, like I said, anything you're scrolling with your thumb, aside from Twitter, and have them do it in story size. So you can then put them in your stories as well, which is 1080 by 1920. And then also have them do landscape, which is 1920 by 1080. It's basically like it's landscape, but rotated. Stories gotcha. is. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to have, think of these in my plan. Right? Okay. Carry the, carry the two. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So just have them created in all three sizes, just similarly like designed, and then just have multiple template sets of those done. And then they're done. I mean, you're not going to pay much for that on Fiverr. That's simple. And all you have to do is just go through, rotate them out, and you're good to go. And that's just the image quotes. So does that make sense on the images? Because I'll dive into like video in a hot second. Yes, it does. I think that. There's a lot of different mediums out there. I'm like thinking of all the social platforms. I don't even know them all at this point, but I guess yeah. you kind of have a template for each one and and continue to make changes as those platforms make changes. But yeah, that makes sense. How, what about video? Yeah, so video and just about the platforms. We've done a ton of research. Like I was saying, we just had to adjust our stuff for Twitter. So like the square videos will go on LinkedIn feeds, Instagram feeds, Facebook feeds. The landscape videos will go on Twitter feeds. And then the tall ones will be the story size. So that'll be Facebook and Instagram stories, just to kind of clear that up for everybody. Then as far as video goes, there's an awesome tool that I love, and it's called headliner.app. Again, they just started charging for it. I don't know what the pricing is. I just got the email from him yesterday or the day before. So I got to go look at it now. But it's um, it's super simple. One of its best capabilities by far is the fact that it will add captions onto your video for you, which is so important because if you don't have captions on your video, people are going to continue scrolling and you're not going to get nearly as much engagement on them. So, and it's not like goofy looking captions either. You can pick your fonts, you can pick your style, you can make them bigger, smaller. You can do like so many different things in Headliner. It's pretty incredible. It's been fun to watch them grow because initially it was like, put in your audio. It was just for podcasts. Put in your audio, take two minutes of your audio, and that's it. Now they do like full-fledged, like they they have a, probably a Getty image library and video backgrounds that they can do. Yeah. You can create templates. You can do like text motion. There's so much. So you can take like a short snippet of video, upload it into Headliner, trim out your in and out points to like up to two minutes, pop it in there. And then it uses like Google's AI to translate it so that it'll auto-populate the captions, which sometimes, especially with me, because I'm a fast talker and I'm Italian, can be hilarious to read the transcriptions <laughs> because they're not accurate. Brr, brr, brr. Yeah, I know. Keep in mind, it's Google's AI, so it's not a real human being do it. That's why mm -hmm. it's so quick. But you have to go through and like make sure that everything translated properly. What's nice is that it's a really quick, simple way to do it. I mean, it does take some time. Like, There's always some legwork if you want to do it yourself. It just kind of is what it is. But it's definitely a really efficient way to do it. It's the most efficient way I have found by far because captions are what's really tough to add to an actual video file. Like Facebook, you can upload the caption file and it will populate if people's, if they're watching on mute. But the problem is that you can't do that on Instagram. So if you're using video on Instagram, you actually have to have the, vi uh, the caption files on the video. So that's what takes care of it in Headliner is that the captions are on the video. You can make them look how you want them to look. And then you may as well just load that to Facebook and be done with it. Yeah, I've seen the when I scr when I've scrolled on Facebook, it has the videos play without sound. I think you mentioned that already, but yes. that's you have to click on it. But I've watched videos because they had captions and because and I didn't turn the volume on, but I was like, oh, uh, I can see what they're saying. So I, oh, maybe I'll stay here for a second, and then oh, right. two minutes later, like, whoa, I watched that whole video. How'd that happen? Yeah, on mute too. You literally sat there and watched yeah. it for two minutes without <laughs> so the sound on. Like it just is what it is. It's crazy uh, to totally. me, but it's just the world we live in. So. But also one cool thing about Headliner that I didn't mention is that like you can go in and create them in Square and then you can just duplicate your projects and make them story size and landscape. It's like mm. they, they've they been awesome in just developing that that platform. So it's definitely worth looking into. Yeah, very cool. Uh, I'm going to check that out because I think that's uh, that sounds like a cool way to kind of 
get started a little easier on video and make it make it give myself the ability to repurpose more easily and not just have to like completely go from scratch every time. I think that's where a lot of people get stuck. It's just like, okay, I've got to build it out, build it, build it out in all these different ways when you could just kind of like build that once, duplicate it, uh, make minor changes and then have that template moving forward. So next time I want to do Twitter, I just kind of duplicate the template from the last one, same Twitter, uh, template. And then like you mentioned, swap out image files or swap out some small things and do it that way. Oh, man, I mean, repurpose house, like just as a general business, um, did you have, it sounds like you have a background in video production and digital marketing shops that, you know, those sound pretty strong as well, but like running a business slash like entrepreneurial stuff, uh, that can be a little bit separate. That's one thing that I thought, like, I know the digital marketing side of things and like, I know the landscape pretty well. I can, you know, pick my battles there and, and put up a pretty good fight in that area. But I found starting my business, like, man, like there's a lot of stuff I didn't know about or think about when I started it. How have things fared for you in terms of, uh, like, running a business and doing all that. <laughs> I have always, always been like heavily entrepreneurial minded, even mm. as uh, when I was really young. I actually started a business a long time ago and I was doing, I had a company that did game footage for athletics. So oh, when cool. there would be hockey tournaments that came into town, like I would talk to the tournament director. I would get a list of every single team that was going there. I'd obviously kick them back, whatever, like percentage of sales. And we would contract with like, 30 of 100 teams that were coming into town and I'd have like nine videographers running to different like hockey rinks just filming. And we're, I mean, this was before, you know, you could do it quickly and on your iPhone. But now, you know, then it was like, you had to burn DVDs and do the whole thing, right? That was like my intro to actually being a business owner. And once I, like, I decided to kind of take a step back because it was growing and I needed to get into like the real world of business. I'd like served at restaurants. You know what I mean? I'm like, I need to mm -hmm. like understand how businesses work a little bit and go into some yeah. something corporate. Um, so I ended up getting a job that was the, I got a paid education in digital marketing at this job. Like the marketing, I was there to do video production. The marketing director took me under his wing. And I learned so much just about digital marketing and business that like I couldn't have paid for the education I got there. And that's when, you know, eventually I ended up with Wake Brand Media. Like a will was client number one because <laughs> yes, he's will, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was an interesting experience, but it was just so much different than Repurpose House because that was, okay, individual gigs. Like if I couldn't find a guy to film it, I'm filming it. Like it was more freelance-ish than this business. And then I sat down with my friend, Russ Perry. He owns Design Pickle, which is a flat rate graphic design service based in the cloud. And yeah, I, I met went, some people at MicroConf, uh, I think at least a couple of years ago. Design Pickle, yeah, cool company. Yeah, super cool company. I went to the Philippines with them and did video production and filmed a bunch of the testimonials of their graphic designers. I mean, now they have like 300 nice. plus graphic designers full time out of the Philippines, but then they had like 80. And granted, it's a three year old company and it has just like exploded. It's been amazing to watch their growth. But having been there, like he sat me down, he's like, listen, you are entrepreneurial minded. What you're doing is great, but you need to come up with something that's scalable. Like, I am happy to help you in any way, like with ideas, thoughts, you need to pick my brain. Great. So ultimately what ended up happening was I basically kind of carbon copied Design Pickle, but for repurposing content. And I'll give him credit all day long. And he's like, he's helped me kind of figure out, he's like, this is what I've learned. This is how our best practices are. Don't make the same mistakes we did. And he's been an amazing resource to me to figure out like how this works. Like we have full-time employment of, you know, all of our graphic designers and our content hackers is what we call them are in the Philippines mm -hmm. full time, full training programs, things like that. So it was really, really helpful to have had somebody who kind of walked the path before and, you know, make the mistakes and was successful in it, be able to give some guidance there. But as far as like the entrepreneurial mindedness, like mentorship and making sure that you're always like listening and asking questions, I have no problem being transparent and saying, I have no idea. And that's the only way that you learn how to make changes for the better and how to implement things that will help your business grow. And that's been the humility of that has been super, super helpful because if you don't ask, you don't learn. I, I certainly don't know everything. I never will. I hope I never do. That'd be hella boring. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but mentors have been a huge part of the entrepreneurial journey for me. Yeah, I mean, I love that. That's, uh, I mean, I'm looking at kind of your pricing tables right now, and it reminds me very much of what my company does in, in terms of just being a productized service. Uh, I mean, the, you know, we haven't built, you know, necessarily software that people are using, um, which is extremely scalable, but you can make services much more scalable by putting them into these packages uh, and selling them uh, for kind of a monthly subscription. So I'm a, I'm a big fan. I've followed a lot of, uh, 
people who have done these kind of productized services in the past, whether it's in the, the WordPress space, like what we do, we kind of put these services together. You know, we do the 24 seven support. And so we'll put these packages together or these care plans together. People buy them and they get, you know, the, the services we offer, but there are so many different uh, areas to do it. in. I mean, you're doing it in the kind of the, con- the, the content and repurposing of content area. Uh, there are people like design pickle who are doing it in the design space, but honestly, like you name it, like whatever industry you're doing services in, there's a way to focus less on kind of the one-off project and focus more on how do I make this recurring revenue thing? How do I create something that people need, not just like this month, but are going to need for every month for the next year or next two years or next three years? Uh, I think that's how you create a business that, like you said, it's it's scalable. In a lot of senses, much more comfortable. Like you kind of know what your revenue is going to be at by (laughs) saying like, what's my revenue this month? What's my, you know, MRR growth rate in general over the past three months? I can say how much my MRR is going to grow. And then I can say, what's my churn rate? How many people are probably going to leave? So you can make a pretty good estimate of like what your revenue will probably be the next month. And that is an enormous difference from just like, if you were just going to do one-time projects for clients, like who knows what's going to happen next month? This is probably a little bit easier, I I would think. Yeah, well, I mean, I transitioned from the one-time projects to the recurring revenue model. And like, it is a game changer. And honestly, like, and and we're also, like I had mentioned before, one-time projects where I'm telling them, no, you don't need more, (laughs) you know, like, because I'm trying to also act in the best interest and educate people. So what's been really cool about this is that the people who are like, what's cool about like a recurring service is that people who are the right clients are really excited about it consistently because they get the value in it. And they are like super rock star clients and they're diehards, which is really amazing to experience because every month they're, they're happy to be a part of kind of like this family. And it's been, it's been interesting and amazing to experience the difference. Yeah. Super dope, man. This has been an awesome episode. Uh, I'm really thankful that we did this episode because I feel like I learned a lot. Uh, I'm sure listeners did as well, but I just, I'm always happy when I have people on. I'm like, man, like, oof, I need to re-listen. I'm going to listen to this a few times when it comes out. So <laughs> Awesome. That's so great. I love hearing that. Well, I'm glad. I was glad to be asked to come on. This has been great. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's, uh, we'll start our wrap up now, but I always tell people, uh, or I always tell our guests, well, we always wrap up by letting people know where they can find you online. So it sounds like maybe some social media profiles or the website. What's, uh, where should people go? Sure. So repurposehouse.com is the business. Shanaweisinger.com is my personal site. Like I do a lot of speaking and training and educating and stuff like that. Um, but on social, really anywhere you want to find Repurpose House except Twitter, because I loathe Twitter, like with just <laughs> anger and fury. I, I'm just a big proponent of like, if you're not going to do it well, just don't do it. And we don't do Twitter well at all. So anywhere other than that, it's Repurpose House Co, CO, or Shana Weisinger. So you can find the company or me online, really anywhere with those two handles. Very cool. And the, I'll give you a little uh, ad- additional place people can find that uh, you is that you do you do a podcast at uh, over at Repurpose House, right? Yes, yeah, it's called the Content Coalition. So that's at thecontentcoalition.com. It's a subpage from Repurpose House, so it it lives there and it's supposed to funnel into that business. But yeah, there's if you go to thecontentcoalition.com, it'll direct you to the podcast page on Repurpose House. And I mean, just some I've been so amazed and humbled by some of the guests, all the guests really that have come on and just offered their expertise. My big goal with that show is for me (laughs) to learn as much as I can about content in general. Like the point is to talk to people who crush content really, really well. And we've had, I mean, guests from GoDaddy, HubSpot. I mean, just the people who are willing to step forward and just educate has been incredible. And so I've learned so much. So if if I learned so much, like I'm just happy to be able to spread the love and get other people to learn as much as I have with that show. It's been pretty incredible. Very cool. I'm on the podcast page right now, and it's 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 look it's looking pretty good. Uh, I I have, I have some work to do on our own podcast page. I think you got some nice video here. You got a nice image with you on the iPhone. Yeah, maybe I've got. We I need to get in the Canva a little bit and do some work there. <laughs> There's cool. a lot of Photoshop involved in that. So. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> cool. Content Coalition. Uh, you have a new listener in me, but I'm sure a lot of people listening now will uh, pick up pick up their phones and uh, and subscribe to the Content Coalition. Uh, awesome. Now, uh, last thing I always ask guests to do is give us uh, or t- to ask our audience for a five star iTunes review. So if you wouldn't mind just giving our audience a little ask, that would be awesome. Yeah, guys, please come on to this show page. Give them a nice little five star review. Head over to iTunes five star also you got there's more than one thing you got to actually download the episodes you got to actually click the five stars and then you have to write a review as well so there's three actions you got to do all three make it happen 
There you go. I love it. Uh, and uh, if you're uh, leaving a review, make sure you tell us what episode you were listening to. Shayna is super awesome. So obviously, you have to leave that in the comments so that we can forward it to her and let her know she uh, helped us get a, a little review out there. WPMRR.com forward slash iTunes. We have a redirect set up to make it nice and easy for you to find our iTunes page. New listeners. You already binge your Netflix. You already binge your Hulu. You already binge your Game of Thrones. Man, that's getting exciting. Can't wait for these final couple episodes here. You already binge that. We got a lot of awesome previous episodes. Feel free to go through and binge uh, previous episodes of WPMRR podcast. Also, Content Coalition. Go binge that podcast as well. You know, go let, go download all the episodes. Things sound good right now, and, and go get them. If you have questions for the show, you can email in uh, yo at wpmrr.com. I do man that email address personally, uh, and I get back to people like pretty quickly. Like, I don't know if you email, like I'll get back to you. Like I'll, I will email you back at some point. It may not be today, but no, thanks for being patient. Uh, yo at WPMRR.com. That is a wrap. Uh, we will talk to y'all again next Tuesday. Shana, thank you again so much for coming on. It's been real. Thank you. Thank you.